everyone. Tom Dixon here, your host of the Financial Experts Network, and delighted you can join us for a special session on very important topics uh, around taxes and all of the issues that are now being brought to bear because of the Build Back Better plan that was first proposed on September 13th in the House and Ways Committee. And wow, does it have implications really for many people, including middle America, small business owners, and the like. So it's not just the wealthy that could be impacted by this plan. So I'm delighted to have join us one of our many experts that we're fortunate to have join us on the Financial Experts Network, and that's CPA Scott Bishop, uh, to discuss some of the provisions in the Build Back Better plan. Scott is a master elite edge slot advisor, as well as the executive director of Wealth Solutions for Avidian Wealth Management. So really delighted, Scott, to have you here uh, to join us. So thank you so much for taking the time. Happy to be on top. Great. Now, as always, folks, please, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and, of course, click on that bell, ding, 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 to get notice of all upcoming posts and videos that, that we will make available. So, so Scott, let's start with, I know, an issue that is very important to you and many high net worth clients that you work with and, and as it relates to the Build Back Better plan and what they're proposing that may really impact the legacy planning of clients and what they need to be thinking about now. So, Scott, if you could, please. Well, Tom, that's a great question. For most of America, these changes aren't going to be really big. But for those people that have estates over $5 million, what's happening is the current unified credit. It's the credit for lifetimes gifts, uh, generation skipping gifts, things you can give to, say, your grandchildren, and estate planning gifts, things you would bequest at death. Right now, each person has an $11.7 million uh, state tax exemption that might be going down to about $5 million. So right now, a married couple has $23.4 million that they could pass to the next generation of state tax-free. That's going to go down to $10 or $11 million. So the people that really need to think about planning now are people that have estates well in excess of $10 million. What's going to be happening is they have a little bit of time to think about these things, Tom, in terms of the giving if it's just gonna be straightforward giving, because this exemption, if it stays as is in the Build Back Better drafts, again, it still has to be uh, voted on, amended and signed uh, by President Biden before it comes into law, but those exemption changes won't happen until January 1st, 2022. But many of the techniques, many of the tools in our toolbox that I've used for over 20 years as a certified financial planner, will be taking away. As an example, right now we have the ability to say we wanted to gift or sell assets, and there's reasons to do that above and beyond a YouTube video, and we want to put those in what's called defective trust or grantor trust so that we could transfer it, transfer it into a trust for our children or for anyone, even for a spouse, and have it be a non-taxable transaction from an income tax standpoint. It's defective uh, from an income tax standpoint, but right now it's a completed gift for estate taxes. One of the things that's happening is they are taking away the ability to use grantor trust or defective trust because it's going to in be included in the grantor, the person that's making the gift, the grantor's estate if they die with it as a defective trust. So that's going to be taken away. That one is going to be taken away when this, is, this bill is enacted, when it's signed into law. And that theoretically could be as early as September 27th, when in theory, the Democrats are supposed to be voting on the infrastructure plan, uh, the hard infrastructure plan, the $1 trillion infrastructure plan, not this Build Back Better, what's estimated at somewhere between 3.5 trillion and 5 trillion. But when that's passed, you will no longer be able to do defective or grantor trust. Another thing that many people use is a lot of people use discounting techniques. So let's say right now, you're a married couple and you have a $23.4 million exemption, but you have a significant amount of real estate. That real estate can be gifted, but it's below, it's above the exemption amount. But what you can do is put it into something like a family limited partnership. You can put it into the partnership and have that partnership appraised. Because that partnership, uh, when, if you were to say give limited partner shares 
to a trust for your children or even to your children, there'll be lack of control because they have a limited partner interest, no voting. And there's also lack of marketability because those partnership agreements do not allow them to sell them to third parties. So sometimes you can get anywhere from a 20 to 30 to 40% discount. Those discounting things to reduce the value of that, of that, say that real estate in that hypothetical example, will be going away for most assets other than businesses and possibly some family farmland type things. You might still have some of those ability, but the discounting will be going away so if you want to do that, you have to do that soon because the discounting that we've used for many, many years, and it's been proven in tax court that it works, is gonna be taken away upon enactment. That's a really big deal that we want to make sure we take care of. And there's even some things that will stay in effect, like life insurance is a great tool for estate tax liquidity. So if you have to pay estate taxes, it creates cash when you pass away, like all life insurance policies do. But right now, most uh, insurance trusts have what's called crummy provisions, the ability to use present interest gifts, and they also are typically done also as defective trusts that we just talked about. So if we're going to be using any types of insurance trusts, it's good to get those things enacted and in place in advance of this bill being passed, if it does get passed as is, because it's another rule that will be in place upon enactment, not January 1st, 2022, but upon enactment. So those are some of the things that really have to be done. So people that want to use um, any type of gifting and retain control using trust, people that want to create partnerships to be able to keep some level of control and be able to get discounts upon transfer, the people that want to use more sophisticated techniques, even things like grants, grants, grantor retained annuity trust, because of these same rules we just talked about, grantor trust, those will basically be going away. Um, without getting into all the details today. So if you really want to get into those types of strategies, the time to talk to your tax and financial team, your CPA, your state planning attorney, your financial advisor is yesterday, possibly today, because these things have to be drafted, transfer and assignments have to be made, things have to be done. If you want to use a partnership, typically with most states, you have to file it with the estate, with the state that you're in. These things have to happen pretty quickly so now is the time to do it. The real time to do it was probably last February, March, when I started writing about these things. But now we're really down in the 11th, uh, 11 p.m., getting close to midnight. If you want to use these strategies, Tom, the people listening really need to get on the ball and look at getting these things implemented. Again, if you're a smaller state, two, three, four million dollars, no big deal. These things typically won't impact you. But these are the types of things that you want to do, especially for clients that are a bit older, Tom, because I'm telling most of my clients, if you're 30 or 40, there's a high probability that this will not be the last tax law that's a big change in their lifetime. Sure. But for clients maybe 70 or 80, these are things they may really want to take advantage of. Great, great, wonderful. Let me let me follow up on something though, Scott. Uh, your, in your comment with the two, three, four million uh, type of client, if that's what you have, but with the idea that the the is it the eyelets that also would be subject, get, given the current draft and what's being proposed, or would would that possibly go away as a technique for anyone? That I mean, that's something that benefits folks beyond the estate and, and gift tax uh, exemptions, right? Yeah, it does. But some of the things that happens right now, most of those are defective trusts. So any defective trust, any grantor trust will be brought back in the estate. The good news with grantor trust, and it was great that you followed up on that, is most of them have a switch where you can we can transfer by taking away whatever of those things that made it defective that the attorney put in. Usually it's what's called a right of substitution, changing assets between in the trust and out of the trust. If they remove that right of substitution, if that's the thing that makes it defective, it goes from being a grantor trust to a traditional irrevocable trust. That will be a way to be able to take care of it. But then you may have some issues with the five by five rules or the crummy rules. Will you still be able to make gifts to it that are present interest gifts? So those are things that are going to make them less useful. But NILIT will still be one of the tools we can use. Life insurance will still be a tool because of the leverage and because of the instant liquidity that life insurance death benefit proceeds bring. So I wouldn't say it would not be a, a tool you could use, but it's something you should probably put in place now. And any trust you have, if you do have trusted have used these things, you may need to be meeting sooner versus later, 
the later would be before you pass away, to make these trusts non-grantor trusts, to make them non-defective trusts, because at least the way the legislation's written now, any defective or grantor trust will be brought back into the grantor's estate. So that's why it's very technical, but it's important to understand what you have. Don't take that binder off your shelf, dust it off, meet with your estate planning team and make sure that your, your estate planning that you spent all the time and money to put in place won't get unwound because of this build back better plan. Okay. So again, I just, just to follow up on that, I want to confirm Scott. So if you do, you do have an existing islet, for example, or I'm going to say almost any kind of trust, given the proposed legislation, really it, it behooves you to go back and look at that now proactively to make sure the provisions and the way your trust has been architected is, is appropriate given this proposal. Is that correct? Is that a very thing much, to do? Very much. Well, it's always a good thing to do and always good to do after enactment. The most urgent thing though, Tom, is for people that want to use these things to meet with the attorneys, for those sure. that have these things in place, uh, give the team a break. You could probably, as long as you're healthy, you can wait till January, say, to get these things done. If you're not healthy or you're having, or, or significantly unhealthy, get those checked now because I'd hate to see, God forbid, someone pass away on January 15th and still have these trusts be granted or trust and have the final legislation be passed and have it be in place where it's brought back into their estate. The last thing you want to do right. is have an insurance trust with a $5 million policy that gets brought back into your estate after doing partition agreements, crummy notices, but leaving it a grantor trust. Again, I'm hoping that there's some clear heads that see that some of these things that don't bring in a ton of revenue can maybe be altered so it doesn't impact the moderately affluent. Because remember, this is supposed to be getting the super wealthy. These are things that we're talking about that may help the super wealthy, but some of the things are really going after mainstream wealthy people. Right, right, absolutely. Okay, so to bring it back to the the, the bigger issue with the state and and gift tax exemptions, and again, what's what's uh, under uh, consideration now with the proposed legislation uh, for especially for clients and anyone listening that has larger estates, uh, lar larger uh, holdings, especially closely held uh, uh, businesses, uh, they should be proactively looking at the strategies that are available still today, uh, techniques such as defective trust, uh, the valuation discounts, et cetera, to really try to take uh, advantage of this window of opportunity that seems to be closing uh, specifically by December 31st of this year, correct? That's correct, because it's, you're still gonna be able to do some of these some of these strategies and gifting, but some of the tools to leverage those assets and make them more valuable and more strategic, maybe take it off the table when this Build Back Better plan is actually signed into law, if it does get signed into law. Okay, great. All right, folks, so again, I think, Scott, uh, lot, lots of great uh, ideas and, and points for people to, to consider. Most importantly, I think you made a big point as always, we recommend that you proactively reach out to your trusted advisors, whoever that might be, whether it's your CPA, your financial planner, an estate planning attorney, whoever you're working with. Uh, if you have concerns, we, we recommend that you get to them immediately, if at all possible. So, Scott, thanks so much for uh, sharing your insights on this uh, very important topic. And this is one of a series of videos that we're doing with Scott. Uh, please look for the other uh, videos and take advantage of those. And uh, with that, we wish you good luck and uh, happy planning.